It's time for Reflections with Pastor Drayton. Hi, and welcome once again. This is Reflection. My name is Philip Drayton. I want to share with you a message today that I, I hope will bless, inspire, and encourage you to live for the Lord Jesus Christ. I am bringing some things to you today that I want you to consider to take very seriously and then you can decide what you're going to do with the information that I share with you. Well, I started last week talking about a hard question. Of course, it is not just one question. It is several questions that I asked last week and several questions I will ask again, but they're all kind of basically the same question, but presented different ways. And I present these questions to you again, not to in any way uh, cast judgment on you or to require any information from you, but really to ask you to ask yourself these, this question. So let me go right on. Uh, last week I ended with Philippians 2.12, which talks about working out your own salvation with fear and trembling. And I encourage you that as you go along your walk, as you go along your life, same thing. As you go along your walk with the Lord, there are things that you have to kind of work through, work out, and, you know, deal with as they come up, as they come along. But let me, let me jump right in the deep end here for you and for me as well. In the book of Revelation, uh, as you will know, one of my personal convictions is that time is running out. Jesus is coming back soon. Um, and, and, and so a lot of what I share, even though I may not share from the book of Revelation, a lot of what I share reflects on what I see in the book of Revelation. But let me go directly to chapter 13, verse 15 through 17. And uh, I am reading from the King James Bible uh, on this one again. And it says, And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. Verse 16. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or on their foreheads, or as the Americans say, foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell save he had that mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. So here we are, jumping right in at the deep end, the book of Revelation. And what we are reading about, what we read about here, is what we call the mark of the beast. Something that, according to Scripture, in this time, all right, and there's, there's difference of opinion as to whether the church will be here in this time or not, or whether we would have been raptured already, uh, but I'm not getting into that today. The issue is that during this tribulation period, at some point in time, the authorities will require that we have this stamp, this mark, either on our, our hands or in our heads, that we would then be able to buy or sell or trade with this mark. If you don't have it, you will not be able to buy or sell. Therefore, there's a possibility you can starve to death. There's a possibility that you will be murdered, uh, killed because you refuse to take the mark. As I've said to you on several occasions, uh, particularly in the height of COVID-19, that I felt that the whole thing was a dry run for this very thing, the whole thing about taking the vaccinations and so on. It was a, a, a dry run. This is my opinion. It's a dry run for the institution of the mark of the beast. I don't believe in any way that the vaccinations were the mark of the beast, not, not by any means at all. But this spoken of here in the book of Revelation chapter 13 is coming. Whether we will be in it or not is another matter, um, but it is coming, whether we like it or not. So if you are confronted with a situation like this, 
And this is the hard question that I kind of want you to ask yourself and answer for yourself before God. Um, would you be willing to die for Christ? Would you be willing to die for your beliefs, for your faith? We, 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 we can find much, much material about Christian martyrs, people who gave their lives, literally gave their lives. The disciples were martyrs. They gave their lives for the cause of Christ, not gave their lives in service. I mean, literally gave their life uh, for Jesus Christ. And so when we consider this, you will say, but why, why would you ask me to think about that? Because, you know, you need to, you, we need to put a value on what Christ has done for us. We need, we need to ask ourselves, he died on a cross. Would I be willing to give up my life for him or for what he has done for me? How much does your salvation, your relationship with Jesus Christ mean to you? Now, I'm not talking about what you show the public or what you show your fellow church members. I'm not asking you that. I'm asking you in the privacy of your own experience, in the privacy of your own thoughts, in the privacy of your own emotions, how much does your relationship with Jesus Christ mean to you? Let me put it a different way. How much credit does his suffering and death on the cross give him in your life? How much credit does it give him for what he's done for you? Um, what will his death, Jesus' death, buy from you? Strange way to put it, but think about it. Uh, I'm not finished yet. Uh, how, how much do you feel <laughs> that you owe Jesus for what he did for you? Question, hard question, very hard question, but it's a question that I think you need to ask yourself. And that I am asking myself, even as this word has gone through me before I'm sharing it with you. Putting aside medical issues, let me go right back to just the basics. Putting aside medical issues, would you be willing to go a day without food for Christ? That seems so trivial. But you know, there are people who, as far as they're concerned, that's too high a price to pay to go a whole day without food. Again, nothing to do with medical issues. Just simply living as a Christian. No, no. I, yeah, yeah, I think it's important to fast, but I, I, I you know, you're not going to admit it, but I'm not willing to pay that price for the Lord. Um, how about prison? There are some, some murky waters right here. Paul and Silas, uh, you go through Acts 15, 16, uh, probably down into 17 as well. Um, let me just quickly, let me take time. Okay, let me just quickly read this, this part. Uh, Acts 16, 16, easy to remember. We're reading from New Living Translation. Um, one day as we were going down to the place of prayer, we met a slave girl who had a spirit that enabled her to tell the future. She earned a lot of money for her masters by telling fortunes. She followed Paul and the rest of us shouting, These men are servants of the Most High God and they have come to tell you how to be saved. Funny. Demons know the gospel very well. Verse 18. This went on day after day until Paul got so exasperated that he turned and said to the demon within her, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ, to come out of her and instantly it left her her master's hopes of wealth were now shattered so they grabbed paul and silas dragged them before the authorities at the marketplace the whole city is in an uproar because of these jews they said to the city officials they are teaching customs that are illegal for us romans to practice a mob quickly formed against paul and silas and the city officials ordered them stripped and beaten with wooden rods. I don't know if it was bamboo or that type of thing, but 
some kind of wooden switch. They were beaten with them. They were severely beaten, according to the word of God, severely beaten, and then they were thrown into prison. The jailer was ordered to make them sure, make sure they didn't escape. So the jailer put them in the inner dungeon and clamped their feet in the stocks. Um, these men were doing the will of God. I know that the majority of you watching this broadcast are not preachers and you wouldn't consider yourself apostles in that strict sense of the word. You're not preachers. But you may be placed in a position where by law you are not allowed to speak about your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. You may think that that is not real in a Barbadian context, but let me tell you, it is as real as the sun is hot. And those of you in the United States of America, it is as real as the weather is beginning to cool there where you are. Listen to me very carefully. These disciples were severely beaten by the authorities because they actually <laughs> they were they were carrying out the life of Christ by casting a demon out of a servant girl and they were basically quickly framed um, brought false charges against them they were severely beaten and thrown into prison would you be willing to do that would you be willing to suffer a severe beating under the law and be incarcerated because of your beliefs in the Lord Jesus Christ because of your carrying out what Jesus said we are supposed to do as his brothers as disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ and and when I, I, I put this together I, I, I put a question here in my notes uh, and it's something that, that I'm considering and, and, and I want you to consider as well this is a hard question if we are not willing to go all the way to go all in with Jesus Christ for our faith does it really make any sense? In other words, can we can we half serve the Lord? Is it is it acceptable for God to half serve the Lord? Or does he require us to go all in? I mean all in. If you go back to the first scripture I shared last week, Wednesday or whenever you watched it. Um, he said, you have to be willing to give up everything if you want to be my disciple. Is it acceptable to give up half or to give up to a certain extent, but no further? Well, Lord, yes, I'll give up this for you, but I'm not giving up that for you. Is, is that acceptable to God? Not me. No, you don't have anything to prove to me, beloved. Nothing. But I have to ask myself this hard question as well. Is it really acceptable to go in halfway? Kind of one for in, one for out. As I mentioned sometime ago, I didn't put it in this context or frame, but I say, is Jesus Christ and his salvation for you merely an insurance policy? Or is, is he your life? Is he your life? Is your salvation uh, worth to you your very life? Uh, let's think about it. Let, let me, let me, let me see how much time I have. Let me just uh, share one more. Not, not in this broadcast. My time is gone. Um, this is restricted to approximately 15 minutes. Sometimes I go a bit over, but I'm going to share one more in this series on a hard question next week with you. I trust that you will join me for that broadcast as well. I know these are not fun, they're not pleasant, but you know what? They can save your life. 
and I, I trust that you will take seriously these questions that I'm giving to you to ask yourself privately, to consider privately before God. And I trust that you will allow them to work in you and produce out of you what God requires. God bless you. I will see you for the final of this series next week, Wednesday.